that means there won't be any um, war between us because we're family. Right? So you're kind of protected. And if anything is wrong here, then you come help me or I come help you. Yeah, that was the whole idea. So, it, didn't, it shouldn't have gotten that far because God told Joseph that you should not help the ungodly. You shouldn't make an alliance with the But it was getting worse and worse. Right? So here we are now. We have a Joram. But this Joram, which was in, in Judah this time, right? And you must notice this. And this is one of the reasons why I believe the Bible said, let, let me just read it. So, you, so you're going to see what, what the difference. It said, Joram was 30 and 2 years old, verse 5. This is 2 Chronicles 21, verse 5. And when he, uh, when he began to reign, uh, let me read it again. Jehoram was 30 and 2 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 8 years in Jerusalem. Just 8 years. Not said in Jerusalem. So you know what I'm talking about. It's not the other, the Joram, because that Joram we will you would have seen saying that he was in Samaria, but this one was in Jerusalem. He is the son of Jehoshaphat, right? And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Notice said that, so you know he's not the king of Israel. Like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife. You see, the intermarriage was said about, right? So he went further. When God said Jehoshaphat wouldn't make a alliance with Ahab, he said, I'm going to make it even deeper. Right? I'm going to cement it. I'm going to lock it in with marriage um, to wife. And he wrought that which was even the sight of the Lord. How be the Lord would not destroy the house of David? Because God made a covenant with David. And he wouldn't do to David his, his, um, his kingdom what he did on the other side. Because of the covenant that he had made with David. And as he promised to give him a light, give a light to him and to his house forever. He said, I'm not going to destroy you forever. There will always be a light. So, something will be there for you. In his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. That was what I was referring to before earlier. That when Ahab died on his side, right, he was the, the northern kingdom, right? When he died, what happened was that, that, that um, the kingdom was broken. Right? Uh, as I said, and when he died, Moab rebelled against him. And the, the, not the southern kingdom of his Judah, when, when um, after Jehoshaphat died, then you see, it says here, the Edomites revolted and made themselves a king. So that we couldn't care less about you now. We also are also in a kingdom. Then Joram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night, and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in, and the captain of his chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt, so the none of all men revolted, right, from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his father. So there was a reason why it was happening, right? He had dominion when, he, when they were serving God. Right? Under David. But now everybody is saying, well, we couldn't care less because David is dead. Um, there is nobody can even control us now. And they just pulling away, pulling away. And the kingdom is breaking down. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compel Judah there to. And notice the fornication here is not a natural fornication but a spiritual fornication because it means they are worshipping idols. They have forgotten the covenant they had with God, who is their true, the true and living God. And there came a writing to him from Elijah. Notice that, a writing from Elijah the prophet saying, Thus said the Lord God of David, thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Joshua by thy father, and in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, was as walk in the way of the kings of Israel, and as made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a warring 
like to the wardens of the house of Judah, of Ahab, and also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease at thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Right? So, and that did happen. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians at, that were um, near the Ethiopians. And they came up into Judah and break it and and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives so that there was never a son left him save Jehoaz the youngest of his sons and after all this the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease and it came to pass that in process of time after the end of two years his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness as and he died of sore diseases and his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers thirty and two years old was he began, when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years and departed without being desired howbeit they buried him in the city of David but not in the sepulchre of the kings he was such a terrible wicked fellow like unto um, Jezebel right his father made him to be king over the kingdom, made him to be king, excuse me, I don't repeat myself, and his other brothers, he gave them presents. And when he established himself in the kingdom, he killed off all his brothers, killed him. For what? And princes, he killed him. For what? For what? He's so jealous that they're going to come and take over the kingdom, or what is it? Right? He only lasted eight years, right? And his last two years were misery, misery. And you know, it is important to notice that in this case, the Bible said Elijah sent a writing to him, right? And he, he, the Lord didn't tell him to go to the kingdom of Judah. He sent him a writing and he prophesied. And this is the last prophecy we're getting from um, Elijah. So Elijah was active right down to the time before he departed. So understand that when Elijah, the last days that Elijah spent here upon earth, right, there was a King Jehoram in Judah and there was a King Jehoram in Israel, right? And the first King Jehoram, he took over from Ahaziah, that's the one who sent the, 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 the soldiers to kill him, and the fire burned him up on the mountain, where was that even on the hill, right? And then the second Jehoram now is in Judah, right? He is son-in-law to the house of Ahab. And the scripture said that Elijah sent him a writing. See, and it's like Elijah said to him, I'm, I'm way over here in Israel, you know, but let me tell you something. My God, see what you're doing over there. You know? See what you're doing. And he sent him a message, right? He sent him a message. And, and believe me, they, he knew who Elijah was too. Okay? He knew who Elijah was too. And the scripture said that. He sent him a message and said, listen, see what you're doing to the house of, of, Israel, of Judah, to David's land, and, and, and how everything is just falling apart in this kingdom. Everything is just falling apart because of, of, of your rebellion. It's going to get worse. And you're going to feel it. Right? You're going to lose everything. Everything you're going to lose. And he lost everything. It, was, it just went down and down and down. The, when he, his enemies came in and took out everything he had. His wife, his children, whatever. And finally, he lost his health. And he lost his everything. His bowels were gone. So this is the last prophecy of Elijah. Before he leaves the earth. Right? But, as I said to you, there are prophecies about Elijah. 
and that's going to be our last study. Next week, we want to look again, because I did a study on this already, I didn't know I was going to do a series on it, but we're going to look again, uh, which we did a study on it last year, we're going to do another study on it, of the, the exit of Elijah, and, and um, how Elisha took over the mantle. Amen? And so we thank God today for the study. Thank you for um, paying attention. I know some people like, they love this kind of thing to be in study of the word. And this is the thing that I grew up with. And um, I've been teaching the word for over 40 years. I started this as a teenager, trained in the word and in the ministry and, and um, theology as they call it and knowing a lot of stuff. Learning from I was, I had any sense to learn from my daddy. But I'm saying to you that these are important things for us to learn. As I said to you, Elijah is going to go into prophecy and we're going to look at it. We are glad because the work that Elijah did is noted in scripture. And we are glad because he is um, a symbol of righteousness today. Many people today, they rather just sit down and listen to somebody preach something and they talk. And they talk maybe half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever. And um, they... Many times they're talking and preaching. They're saying the same thing over and over and over again. Right? I'm not going to come and tell you that, okay, you're going to find a pot of gold tomorrow or even next year, whatever. Right? I'm not going to tell you there's gold at the rainbow, fruit of the rainbow. I'm not going to tell you about your haters and all those things. Which I don't even know why people keep preaching about those things about, or your haters going to this, whatever. Because I want to preach love, and I believe that's what should be in the church. And if you, if in your church you always have haters, then something is going on wrong, you know. There need to be a revival. There need to be, um, you know, a, 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 a great change, right? If, if the church is just full of haters, and, or you hate haters, what is hated, really? You're right in the church, really. Is that so? Right? So where is that church going to? Right? And if... You know, so I want to promote love, I want to promote friendship, I want to promote um, goodness and mercy. Right? I preached a sermon, um, was it last year or the year before, about the year before, 2018, about friendship, right? Which, and that's what we want to promote in the church. We want to promote among the children of God. Love, we want to promote eternity, right? We, people today are using the word eternity carelessly. I saw man post on his website something about eternity. I, I, I was I was turned off. You know, he's talking about money and riches. What well, has to do with eternity? Right? You know. One thing we know is this that it doesn't matter who you are, when you are dead, they bury you in the ground. And if you have money, somebody else is gonna get it. You you're crazy. If you think they're going to bury you with that money when they want it? No, no, no. They're going to bury you with the money because you have money? <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. Right? Not going to happen. Right? People today are, are, are sometimes waiting, just wishing for a person to die so they could inherit what they have. Right? So the Bible says, He heaped up treasures not knowing who shall gather them. Right? But we have, they have their consolation in this life. But we want a consolation. An assurance that when we shall come to the end of this, the Lord will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen. And I'm just going to sing a verse of a song here, which is only trust him, and we're going to pray. Amen.